Okay, so good morning or good afternoon or good evening to to our audience today, depending uh, on what part of the globe you are. And uh, I'm Massimo Martelli. I am a researcher at the National Research Council uh, of Italy, and I also serve as the um, general secretary for ISTBS. So it is my, my pleasure to welcome uh, everyone today at the kickoff, to this kickoff of our new digital event series. <clears throat> this is a, a new series of online events which take place on Wednesday at uh, 12 noon UTC, as you, you can see on screen. So uh, at a time that we deem uh, suitable <laughs> for uh, more or less everyone. So morning in North America, midday in Europe, Africa, and, and evening in, um, in Asia. So this uh, digital event series represents our buildup to the ISTVS uh, conference that's taking place at the end of September. And this series will alternate uh, every week between informal student-led research seminars and Terra Mechanic Bytes uh, by established researchers. And before before uh, passing the floor to, to our presenters today, uh, please allow me to do a, a little bit of uh, housekeeping so you can make the best of your experience and, and properly use the Hopping online platform to, to interact uh, with us. Uh, so uh, on the right-hand side of your of your window, of your browser window, you should have a, a stage stage group. Uh, and under that, you will have uh, two, you will find two tabs, uh, chat and Q&A. So um, I kindly invite everyone uh, to use the chat, to please use the chat tab uh to to post uh, a brief uh introductions of of yourself so who you are uh what your organization is and what do you do and and please use the chat use the chat just just for that then uh at the end uh, we're going to have three presentations today and at the end of each presentation uh, we will have a five-minute uh, Q&A and discussion. And so please uh, post uh, your questions for our presenters uh, using the Q&A tab. So once again, please use the chat tab for introduction and uh, Q&A tab uh, for posting questions uh, for, for the presenters. So. As you can see <clears throat> on the screen, uh, presenting today and kicking off this series, and I deeply thank them for, uh, for being willing to, to help us uh, kicking off this series. We have Nathan, Bongani, and Winand. I'm sticking with the first names, so I won't butcher uh, anyone's uh, family name, so then they'll uh, they'll uh, say their name better than I could do. So we have Nathan Bongani uh, and Winan from the Vehicle Dynamics Group uh, from the University of Pretoria in South Africa, and uh, the the title for their today's student research seminar is the use of semi-active suspension control to create uh, and improve upon other systems for SUVs. So now that housekeeping is done, I leave it to Nathan 
to to start the actual presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Massimo. Um, if you can just stop sharing your screen, I'll get into the presentations. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right. Um, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nathan Moles, and today we'll be having the Vehicle Dynamics graduate student presentation from the University of Pretoria on the use of semi-active suspension control in order to create and improve upon advanced driver assist systems for off-road vehicles. Presenting today will be myself, Nathan Moles, followed by Bongani Zulu, and finally ending off with Veinand Esereisen. So who are we? We have all completed our bachelor's degree in 2020. We are now honors students, which in South Africa means that we are in the first year of our master's presentation, or well, research rather. Uh, we are still doing our initial reading as well as formulating our problem statement. We really are right at the start of our research for our master's degrees. So to give you some background on what is suspension, uh, you can think of it as a spring and damper connecting the sprung mass of the vehicle to the unsprung mass of the vehicle, where the sprung mass, you can think of the chassis and everything above, and the unsprung mass is the wheels, tires, and uprights. Now, the suspension is responsible for much of the dynamic response of the vehicle. And on the right-hand side, you can see the top mounting bracket of the suspension mounted to the chassis, as well as the bottom mounting of the suspension mounted to the bracket. To give you some details on the suspension system, we have four hydrogen pneumatic suspension systems, uh, one for each wheel. This gives us the capability of having three nonlinear spring stiffnesses in each suspension system, as well as continuously variable damping. The newest addition in our fourth generation prototype is the incorporation of ride height control, which is still being characterized. So to give you a better idea of how the suspension works, we have a schematic on screen. Uh, seen on the left is one accumulator, and on the right, the second accumulators, which house the gas of the system. And you can see from the valves we have here, we can choose to have either one accumulator open the second accumulator open or both accumulators open. And this allows for the three distinct spring stiffnesses. You can also see the continuously variable valve for the damping, as well as a blow off valve for the asymmetry of the damping. To give you an idea of what's happening inside the suspension system, on the right, we can see the two mounting blocks for the suspension as well as the piston inside the strut. At the top here, we can see the two gas accumulators. And on the left-hand side, we can see the four uh, valves for our damping and flow control. Seen here on screen on this force versus displacement plot, we have the three stiffnesses corresponding to the three uh, setups of the accumulators. And as you can see, they are highly nonlinear and they vary vastly from each other, allowing for a great range of customization and control over the suspension system. Similarly, we have the continuously varying damping seen on this force versus velocity plot. You can see how the system is asymmetric and you can also see that we are able to vary the damping forces from this lower bound to the upper bound. The relevance of our work is that we are creating control systems for vehicles on varying off-road terrains. And this includes vehicles from single-seater buggies, SUVs, all the way up to mining vehicles and more. The applications of our research is to be used in an integrated chassis control system, which includes but is not limited to terrain profiling, suspension control, ABS control, uh, collision avoidance, 
uh, intelligent vehicle and control center communication, and finally, optimized pathing for assisted and or autonomous vehicles. So that's the end of the introduction. And let's jump into our first presentation of the day. So once again, my name is Nathan Moles, and for my topic, I'll be presenting the minimization of the handling versus ride comfort compromise using the semi-active suspension control system previously displayed. So to give you a look at the actual hardware, um, you can see our suspension system here, uh, the two bearing mounting blocks, as mentioned before, as well as the two accumulators housing our gases. Uh, then we also have our continuously varying valve and our flow valves that control which accumulators are open or closed. So the goals for my project are to create a more comfortable, safer, and better performing vehicle. And doing this through maximizing the ride comfort as much as possible while avoiding rollover and improving the handling of the vehicle when necessary. So this is a short video of what to avoid uh, when we say a safer vehicle. This is quite an old uh, video of one of the first baseline tests. You can see our test vehicle Land Rover Defender executing a very harsh double lane change maneuver at high speed, and you can see what happens. So this is one of the main functions of the suspension is in these dangerous scenarios to implement a slide before roll condition. Uh, Nathan, and Nathan, sorry, I think your screen share has, has disappeared. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, um, you're back. It seems that trying to play the video automatically stops screen sharing on Hopin. So, sorry for the technical issue. So to show the video once again, this is the instance of rollover for one of our previous test vehicles. So you can see this is a catastrophic failure and is to be avoided as much as possible. Um, in the second video, we have a successful implementation of one of our 4S4 suspension units that implements a slide before roll condition in the same maneuver at high speeds. So you can see with this, even though the vehicle slid completely out of control, we're still able to prevent it from rolling over. The guideline or flow for my project is to draw on three main uh, areas of previous research, namely the optimal ride comfort and handling suspension characteristics, which were first characterized by Michael Thorson in 2003, then in 2020, Benjamin DeVette used these characteristics to set up the suspension in our system for those optimal suspension characteristics. And finally, a preview model for a prediction algorithm developed by Bernard Lindstrom in 2015. My research will be focused on selecting the optimal vehicle measurements, as well as developing the control algorithm and controller in order to output the suspension characteristics for the desired vehicle response. The initial conditions for my research is that the passive setup is known from previous work. The ride height control is not considered, um, as is the newest addition to the prototype. I have identified a ride comfort metric as the running RMS of the vertical acceleration, 
And for rollover metric, I've identified the lateral or Y zero moment point. Uh, to give you some idea of what that actually means, the closer the Y ZMP is to the wheel contact point, the lower the stability of the vehicle overall. And when that Y ZMP reaches the tire contact patch, we experience rollover of the vehicles. There's two models to choose from, namely the rigid and roll models. The roll model is a lot more accurate. However, it is a lot harder to actually get the prerequisite uh, measurements to compute it accurately. This is just to visualize what that YZMP actually represents. Uh, we can see here that if you divide your vehicle into the half track widths, the ZMP is actually a point on the road through which the net force vector um, actually directs towards. So the lateral or YZMP is measured as the distance between that half track width and the perpendicular distance to the ground. Now with identifying the control domain, so far I've identified uh, in this plot of the running RMS of the vertical acceleration on the Y axis and the YZMP on the X axis. Um, I've identified the region where the system should be in the optimal ride comfort mode, as well as where the vehicle should be in the optimal handling mode, such as for advanced maneuvers or dangerous situations. And in between those two almost passive setups, we have a continuous control domain, which will be the focus of the control algorithm and controller. So what I want to investigate uh, further and into the future is using the inside versus outside suspension forces to influence the roll stiffness of the vehicle, as well as using the front versus rear suspension forces to either preserve or alter the steering gradients of the vehicle to influence its understeer versus oversteer characteristics. The expected results at the end of my project is to create a vehicle that is safer, more comfortable, and has a better handling performance. Thank you very much. I'll stop the screen share now and we can get over to the Q&A session. So I see in the chat or the Q&A tab, uh, we have a question. Do you include lateral tire stiffness in the rollover model? Um, this is model dependent. If I choose to go with something like a model predictive controller, then yes, I'll have to take into account a relevant tire model. However, if I go for something like a heuristic controller, I can simply look at the response of the vehicle. Uh, second question is, what is the response time of the suspension systems switching to different characteristics? Um, we are able to completely um, vary the suspension system from, you can think of it almost as a eco or normal mode to a sports mode and anywhere in between in under 100 milliseconds. So it is a very fast uh, switching time. Uh, any more questions? Okay, right. it, it looks like, oh, sorry, Nathan, I was just going to say it looks like we have no more questions. So if you want to proceed with, with your presentations, please go ahead. Oh, sorry, I see there is a question coming up. Uh, 
how are you assessing handling as opposed to role stability? So currently the handling metric is going to be the focus of my reading going forwards. As I said, I've identified my, my rollover metric and I've identified my ride comfort metric, but handling overall is such a broad term. You can look at everything from your lateral acceleration, your roll acceleration, um, your roll stability, as you mentioned, um, these are all factors that come into play, and I'm still in the process of selecting which are most relevant um, because we have had some research on this in the past, but the goal is to try and make a, a better performing system that doesn't err in the side of uh, being, uh, missing the word now, but overly conservative. I hope that answers your question. Okay, so we have another question. Uh, what is the objective with being able to modify the steering characteristics of the vehicle? Um, so when we're looking at changing the suspension of the vehicle throughout either a maneuver um, or as it undergoes an event, if we start changing uh, the suspension system overall, we're going to start um, varying the steering response that the vehicle has. So we are looking at an inexperienced driver that isn't, shall we say, as well versed in steering at different speeds or um, in different scenarios. So what you can do is you can actually induce um, oversteer or induce understeer um, to try and limit the the vehicle's response in a dangerous scenario. Thank you, David, Claire. Um, that's something I will definitely look into in my research. All right, if there are no further questions, and I thank you very much to everyone who did ask, um, I'll be handing over to my colleague, Bongani Zulu, who will be taking the next presentation. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, my name is Bongani Zulu, and my presentation today and my research is the relevant prevention and handling, handling improvement by low transfer. The motivation for my research is that rollover is one of the most serious and life-threatening events that a motor vehicle can experience. Therefore, my goal of my research would be to use the four-state semi-active suspension system, also known as the force 4 to influence the load transfer of the vehicle. The relevance of my research to the ISTVS is that the VDG's research is focused on off-road terrain, uh, hard and rough off-road terrain. Therefore, we would be contributing to the knowledge base of the terrain vehicle interaction. Some past ventures at the VDG have been researched with regards to rollover prevention, uh, slow active suspension control, active anti-roll bars, uh, brake-based torque vectoring, and integrated rollover prevention and your control. To begin with, we should state what is load transfer. Load transfer is defined as the shifting of weight or the load as a result of the acceleration forces on the vehicle. My research will be mainly focused on the lateral load transfer, which occurs during cornering or similar maneuver, where a shift of mass across the wheels occurs due to a centrifugal force and a lateral acceleration. Through my research, I have come up with three investigation outcomes that we will have to look at to achieve the goal of rollover prevention and handling improvement. The first one would be lowering the center of gravity height. This will allow for the static stability factor of the vehicle to increase and lead to the vehicle to slide before rolling. 
The second would be to optimize the suspension characteristics for the situation needed. This will allow us to reduce the vehicle's propensity to roll over by reducing the body roll. And the final investigation outcome is increasing the roll stiffness of the vehicle. This will increase the vertical load transfer on the tires as well as decrease the lateral forces between the road and the tires. At the VDG, with regards to ride height control, there was an there was research by our colleague uh, Fonda Vestesen in 2012, where their results showed that significant improvement in the body roll angle is possible by actively controlling the amount of oil in each of the hydropneumatic suspension struts. Therefore, active ride height control can be and is being implemented at the VDG using the same hardware and just a change in the algorithms. In this slide, we can see a figure of the hydraulic circuit for a single suspension unit. The process goes as follows. Oil is supplied by a pump. The pressurized oil is then stored in a bladder type accumulator, which applies oil to the suspension when the strut is extended. The directional valves con connect the suspension strut either with the accumulator or the oil reservoir to add or drain oil throughout the system. The proportional valve controls the in and out flow of the oil and is opened relative to the magnitude of the lateral acceleration of the vehicle. Therefore, we can achieve ride height control. To end off with, the aim of my research is to use the 4S4 to influence load transfer on the vehicle, possibly with other vehicle implementation measures such as those mentioned before, to achieve handling improvement and rollover prevention in dangerous events. Thank you, that is the end of my presentation and I'll be taking questions. Uh, thank you, Andres, for your question. Um, how much do I expect the change of the roll stiffness to change the load transfer? Well, load transfer is directly proportional to the roll stiffness of the vehicle. So therefore an increase in the roll stiffness would increase the load transfer. Uh, the load transfer here is defined as the difference in forces between the outside tire and the inside tire. And as stated before, with an increase in the roll stiffness, we would achieve lower lateral forces on the tires. Okay, Does, do we have any more questions for Bongani? If so, please, please type in the Q&A tab. Oh, well, thank you, Massimo. Um, if there are no further questions, then I will be handing over to my colleague, uh, Feynant Estesen. Oh, Good day. Uh, sorry, Bongani, we had a last second question from Dr. Alex Keen. If you, if you want to answer that before Passing over. Uh, thank you, Dr. Keed. Uh, as stated by Nathan, the correction time in our, our vehicle is in the ballpark of 100 milliseconds. Um, at the moment, we're still implementing the active ride height control, uh, but I would assume that it would be the same as how the system would react between ride handling and comfort, so in the region of 100 milliseconds or less. Okay, thanks again, Bongani. Uh, please, please, let's go. Let's go ahead with the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Bongani and Nathan. Um, my name is Vainat Estreisen. Uh, I will be looking at suspension characteristic effects on braking performance on off-road terrain. 
The problem being that ABS braking performance deteriorates on and off-road terrain uh, due to tire normal force variations. And the motivation for my research is to improve the longitudinal force generation and while maintaining lateral force control um, to achieve shorter controlled braking distances. Um, important factors to discuss is the suspension force prediction, longitudinal force generation between a tire and a road, uh, tire models used, and then finally experimental validation and a little discussion on lateral control. The goal is to use the semi-active suspension to improve braking performance using a control algorithm and then experimentally validating these, this control algorithm. The relevance this has to the ISTVS is the longitudinal and lateral force generation to be modeled on a non-deformable undulating terrain. Just to clarify, it will be non-deformable and undulating terrains. Looking at the suspension force prediction, um, as a research by Prof. Amashma and else in 2020, uh, it is possible to look at vehicle measurement um, and to predict the road input and from that predict the suspension forces. Um, as shown, a simple linear quarter car model could be um, analyzed using a linear Kalman filter and the road profile found for that. Looking at longitudinal force prediction, Important factors that need to be taken into account are the vertical load fluctuations um, and importantly as well, lateral force predictions uh, and tire relaxation lengths. In the plot to the right, you can see the friction coefficient plotted in terms of wheel slip percentage. And an ABS algorithm will try to maintain a cycle at the most optimum friction coefficient uh, to allow for uh, longitudinal force generation, but also maintaining lateral control. Challenges found with tire simulations uh, are choosing the complexity of your tire model and how that applies to your problem. Um, the complexity could go anywhere from a Pacheco tire model all the way to a finite element tire model, and the accuracies involved with these models are also uh, related to their contact models, as shown in the image to the right, um, where you can see a finite element model showing a uh, very accurate uh, contact area, and a point contact would not suffice for this type of undulating terrain. Experimental validation of a control algorithm could be done using uh, wheel force transducers. Um, as seen fitted to a vehicle to the left, the uh, VDG uh, Land Rover. And the data shown on the right are showing the vertical forces on that real uh, left wheel while driving over the Belgian paving. And it can be seen how the strut pressure and a load cell is compared to the wheel force transducer data showing good correlation and accuracy for the wheel force transducer. Now these wheel force transducers are actually produced by the VDG in-house and they range from different sizes and shapes all from 10 inches down to a large 29 inch rim. Now interesting to note here as on the VDG uh, tire test trailer with a larger diameter tire that is a bit more bendable, um, it can be seen that a slip angle applied to the trailer or applied to the wheel will induce uh, lateral forces, and these uh, can be shown with the orange arrow. The tire is shown to bend towards these lateral forces. Then as soon as the tire is kept at the same slip angle, but braking is applied, it can be seen that the tire straightens out. And what this suggests is that longitudinal forces are given a higher priority over the lateral forces generated as shown by the different sizes of these arrows suggested. The aim of my research is to develop the suspension control algorithm to increase longitudinal force generation while maintaining lateral control under braking conditions on a hard undulating terrain. And then to experimentally validate the control algorithm using a test trailer 
with continuously variable spring stiffnesses and dampening on this hard undulating terrain. Thank you. I will now be taking questions. I see a question here. Um, so the Pacheca time model versus finite element model, uh, is there the evidence of a poor Pacheca performance and why would a finite element, element model be better? So in terms of the Pacheca time model, the assumption is usually that a point follower uh, contact area is used. Um, and then a finite element model will show a better simulation for the contact patch between the tire and the road. Um, sorry, Vian, you're asking if I could please go back to the vertical vehicle model. Um, let me see what you're referring to. Vertical vehicle model. I'm assuming you're referring to this. The vertical vehicle model. Sorry, uh, Vian, if you could clarify on that question of yours. All right. Thank you. OK, uh, we also had uh, a question from Dr. Keen uh, uh, coming in uh, uh, right after Bongani had passed over to you. Uh, how far in a turn before the height change reacts and could it cause an instability? Uh, I don't know which which one of you uh, might want to to answer this. Uh, I think the question was directed towards B, so I can answer that. Um, the vehicle would have a rollover index implemented into the hardware, such as uh, Nathan mentioned the YZMP or the difference between the lateral forces between the inside and outside tires. And therefore, this rollover index would tell the system when it should react and alter the height or switch to the handling mode. Um, would if it, In regards, if, 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 if it would have an instability in vibration, um, not at all because our system is very, our system is necessarily quick, but not, it doesn't react so quickly that it would, for example, jerk the car in any sense. It has quite a, a decent changeover, so there wouldn't be any vibration or instability. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Bongani. So since uh, our three presenters today did a great job of remaining uh, right on schedule, um, if that's fine with you, I would like to make, uh, some announcements and so that in the meantime, uh, I give the possibility to our audience to think to further questions if, if they, if they want, uh, so that after my, uh, my announcements, I can maybe, uh, give five uh, five more minutes for for a final Q and A Q and A sessions. Uh, so, uh, Nathan Bongani, Wayne, wh what do you think? Is that fine with you? I am good to take additional questions. Okay, so I'll just go ahead with uh, with my announcements, and so for all our audience today, if you have some further questions 
for our presenters, please, uh, please again post them in the Q and A tab, and they'll they'll take it at the end of of these announcements. Thank you. Okay, so uh, today, uh, as already said, we kicked off uh, our digital event ser 2021 digital event series with this uh, student research seminar by the Vehicle Dynamics Group, and I would like to thank again uh, our our speakers for for kicking off uh, this series with us and uh, i would like to give you a preview of the next the next episode of this series next wednesday july 14th 12 noon utc which means uh 8 a.m uh, usa eastern time 2 p.m. Central European time and 9 p.m. Uh, Japan Standard Time. And uh, as I said before, we are alternating between uh, student research, informal student research uh, seminars and what we have called Terra Mechanics Bytes, uh, which are uh, lessons, uh, lect sorry, not lessons, <laughs> lectures. Uh, um, which go in deeper in deeper detail on a specific on a specific topic, and we are kicking off our Terra Mechanics bites with um, a lecture by Dr. Alex Keane, who is the ISTVS National Secretary for the United Kingdom and also the editor in chief for the ISTVS Research Initiative, and the title of his lecture is. Terra Mechanics and Climate Change, with particular reference to the UK. So the structure for, uh, for this event will be different uh, from today. So Dr. Keane will be uh, the only speaker for the day. Uh, having, it will uh, make this lecture. It will be about around 45 minutes or so. And then we will have about uh, 10 minutes for Q&A and an open discussion. Since we have uh, quite a long series uh, for, this, for this digital event series, uh, I kindly invite you to keep an eye on, on the link uh, that you find here, that you can see here on screen. Uh, well, we will we'll keep updating uh, the program as um, as we confirm uh, new speakers uh, for uh, for each day. As you can see, uh, we have quite a busy a busy schedule. So we will have uh, we are planning to have uh, one event per week each Wednesday uh, up to uh, September fifteenth, and uh, of course. Um, Speakers and topics uh, still to be announced for most of these events, but we already have uh, a speaker for the second Terra Mechanics Bite uh, on July 28th. It's uh, Dr. Luth Richter, uh, ISTVS uh, first vice president. And uh, yeah, top, the topic will be announced soon. So uh, keep, an eye, uh, keep an eye on, the, on our website. And as I announced at the beginning of this event, this digital event series represents a new initiative for ISTVS, and we are we are very proud of this. And uh, but this is also our build up to the to the ISTVS twentieth uh, International and ninth Americas Conference who's taking place on September 27 to 29. And as you already know, uh, it's going to take place online. And uh, please check, check the updates uh, on the conference uh, specific uh, website at the link that you can see here on the screen, conference.istvs.org. Okay, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, from the backstage, uh, uh, people is uh, 
pointing out that uh, that I was missing a very a very important announcement. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for uh, for stopping me there. Uh, let me go back a couple slides. So as you can see, we have uh, two, three, four, five more uh, student research uh, seminars already scheduled. So uh, I invite all the the student research groups out there to please consider um, being the the presenters uh, for one of these of these events um, just like the guys at VDG uh, did today so uh, as you as you saw uh, I think the the tone uh, of the of the event is informal enough that you can uh, you can face it uh, without uh, feeling too much scared. At least that's what I hope. And so please uh, please uh, consider uh, consider doing this and get in touch with us to to be uh, our next presenters. So I think now. Now it's really, it's really it for, for the announcement. So if anyone from the audience has any, any less time, any last minute uh, question, uh, please feel free to, to post it on the Q&A tab. I'll give it. Okay, I don't see any more questions. So be, before, uh, before closing this stream, I want to thank once again, the people at VDG and, and, uh, uh, I'll leave it. Um, I'll uh, let Nathan say a few a few final final words. Please, Nathan. Thank you very much, Massimo. Um, I just want to do thank ISTVS and Massimo for hosting us today. This was a great experience and wonderful exposure, and I really really would encourage. Uh, more students from universities around the world to engage in this. Um, just thank you once again for giving us this opportunity. Well, thanks, Nathan. It was my pleasure and uh, the pleasure of uh, ISTVS to to have you here today. And and I'm very uh, proud to see that we had we had quite uh, quite a good attendance for today and and with that i think that that's that's all for today and i i hope to see you all of you and possibly more of you uh at our uh, next events uh next wednesday and the following wednesday so from from myself, Massimo, and ISTVS, uh, thank you very much, and have have a good day uh, or good evening, <laughs> good night, depending uh, on where you are. Thank you and goodbye.